believe in the draft, right? I, I agree that the insurance policy feels like a good idea, but I think, you know, Blacklist are coming back into their old roots of making sure, you know, if we're going to team fight, we're going to team fight hard. If we see Edward get caught, call Altar, Flicker coming in from Renegade is to be expected. Yeah, so that's one thing that Blacklist has, an amazing box. But just the same, the re-engage and the threat of activation from Aura, not only having the Kaja for themselves, because the prior threat was, uh, yeah, no, uh, we can just have uh, Reza steal it away, but no, that's not gonna happen. They have the DJ themselves. So if they catch anyone sleeping from Blacklist, then yeah, they can pick the fight. But wait, up top, Kabuki. Mm, he's taking way too much damage here. He's going to be forced to lose something. Early recall, which means an early lead for Oheb. Oh, Kabuki decides to stay around for this last part of the wave. They can't punish it just yet as well as High making sure that he's covering, but notice that even the Valentina was trying to make a move. Yep, uh, we see that Reza is going off of momentum from game one. He played an amazing, oh, again, Valentina game. <laughs> so he's basically pressing load save game. Now bottom lane, this is a matchup that I think both of them have to make the most of. Again, clear it. And then they know that they both don't want to stay there. This is uh, very much akin to uh, a Lapu Lapu Terizla matchup, but this time around it's very rotation based. It's very like, yeah, I'll stay and then go as quickly as possible. And that's what we're seeing here. Uh, how deep Aura is. Look at that. Dang. Vaughn actually playing that really, really well. Able to steal away, uh, able to steal away at least one camp to get the EXP lead. It hasn't really turned it into a full lead just yet, but both sides just refusing to use the Retribution. Edward getting ready for the Electrifying Beats. He's stacking it up fast. The box comes down and Hades tries to get into the middle of that pit. He takes it away with the call. Altar as well. First blood achieved oh. by Ohem as they make it back out. Red J wants a little bit more, but High is going to walk away scot-free. Pot Levy is going to make it easy for Red J to walk back. Back and we'll try and force him to recall as soon as possible with the Ionic. No, he's not gonna die here, right? No, Palevi. Uh -oh. Palevi, don't do it. He flickers for he the try! He tries anyway! Ren J gets to live and gets a free battle spell. Yep. He used the Shadow Stampede, the maximum potential. And again, this is what you get when you have an XP laner who has an who has amazing instincts and mechanics put into a roam position. It didn't work very well in game one. I'll have to admit that wasn't the best Cho game for Renage, but here he's making up for it by taking an inch or several inches away from Aura Fire's massive lead from game one. And this is a much better position for Blackness already now. The 1v1, the 2v2. Mm -hmm. They move towards that top side. They're trying to punish Oheb. Oheb is able to step away. High, unable to punish just yet. He doesn't have his flicker. And we reset. So a little bit of breathing room. You see here that Kabuki is threading the needle. He's looking at how much he can get away with and how much he can force Oheb to either overextend or misread the situation because again yes this is what you were describing mm -hmm. Gideon as the insurance policy a late game Moscow does not uh, put in as much fear Ooh. as well but here we go the call altar has already been popped high ends up dying regardless of energy now the clap back from Blacklist International Retribution's traded on both sides so now they back off the reset once again with 20 seconds left on the clock for the next upcoming turtle what I was trying to say is uh, there is very few things more scary than a late game Moscow. You've seen it yesterday in the hands of Sasa, but now Haji with an RWM. What can he do? Oh, he's getting way too low here. Hades has a free decimate. He gets it, but the kill still goes over to Haji. And Hades, he's holding on to the decimate. He knows that's not my place to take the kill, right? Let's get Haji ahead of the game, and then we can start taking this neutral as they get right onto it. Oheb is trying to keep Palevi back. Consecration has already been blown. Falls back into the mortar coils, and the RWM from Reza is going to try to keep oh. Hades in check. Gets him down, and now it's anybody's game. Anybody could be stealing away this turtle, and who gets it? It falls into the hands of Palevi with a fully stack Ionic edge. And the fight dissipates. They have dispersed away from the turtle's nest and this gives Aura Fire a small lead, about 200, 300 gold now. They're threatening Rena J. Do they know Oheb is here? Do they know that he did not retreat? There's still that big heart left in that wave. Mm -hmm. Yep, you don't want to be missing any of those, but and again, we've already passed the five minute mark. It's not going to matter any longer. But the amount of pressure that Aura is putting on this very first tier one, five minutes into the game is looking good. Slight leads on all sides. Call Ooh. Altar is already down black. Oheb still falling at the very, very end. Tries to use the Inspire to keep himself alive. And now RWM as the clap back. High is able to use the lightning bombs just to get out of the box. Oh, so close. 
but that's never enough. Now Van with the clap back, bombs away. Hades, oh, he got terrified. Yeah. Oh, that's so unfortunate that the terrified makes you go the opposite direction. Uh -oh. It feels so bad. Oh, I was just saying, man, this early game was relatively slow for Aura Fire compared to game one, right? But that's because they invested a lot in their defense. Look at this, high now on that Kaja with a brute force breastplate. So yeah, gonna be able to catch up. Van and Palevi each have a Radiant Armor already, so they're not so worried just yet about Oheb, the aforementioned insurance policy, but yeah, they are ready to face off against Edward and Haji, who is going to be that mid to somewhat late game power spike before Oheb is ready. Even Renege is threatening, uh, is posing a good threat, uh, given that this is a Faramis. Uh, he is building a roaming Faramis, but look oh. at the positioning. Look at Edward. Oh, he wants it. He's already trying to close the distance, but he notices that High still has his ultimate. There's no way to really bait this out unless you all in. Edward doesn't want to do that just yet. Van trying to close off their options, knowing that they're going to be around that purple buff side, allowing space for Pahlevi to immediately start clearing out the waves. On a fundamental level, uh, when you're talking Talking about the uh, draft presented by Blast oh. International. Oh wait, there's a pull! The Divine Judgment looks good, but Edward decides just to walk forward, take them all out with the electrifying beats, even getting the vengeance out. Kabuki now gonna get punished, falling into the Shuras aura. Double kill for Agent Zero, and now Vaughn, he has to do this with zero support. He has to make it work. He knows that Hades doesn't have, that re doesn't have his retribution, but he can tank all the members at once. He needs to start speeding this up. He's got retribution. Oh no! He drops it, and he's able to secure the turtle does he get to walk away for free Ooh, call altar protects the rest of the team and now Vaughn, he's just taking the damage slowly but surely don't tell me he survives this and it's edward who's able to pick him off just in time gets that last dash in on time to punish Van. I could have sworn he was gonna walk away. He could actually, given the regen and of course the tough boots that saves him from all the CC. Rather the soft CC that Blast International has. That's what I was trying to get to earlier before this all broke out. Blacklist, relatively lacking in vision. They can't really face check into bushes as safely as most lineups can these days in this meta game. And they also don't have solid lockdown. Mm -hmm. If there's a fight that they're going to win, it's a fight that Aura Fire walks into willingly. Exactly, right? They are the ones who need to take the initiative. Edward just stopping the recalls, trying to keep Aura Fire on their toes and break away from the tempo. Reza now punished with Shadow Stampede, is able to pull him back into the RWM, forcing out to steal the call altar to save his own life. And now Blacks International, they, they have their formula. They understand uh, the dynamics of these team fights. But so far, Aura Fire are still a step ahead. Edward struggling to protect this tier one down bottom. Gonna be able to do it. But yeah, we've been talking for what, the past couple of minutes? Mm -hmm. Oheb never left top lane. Oh. <laughs> Palevi has been keeping him honest and he's still there. Yeah, Palevi is just gonna, he's gonna wither the storm, of course. But here we go, Hades, he's walking up blue, close eye, actually flickering forward into the Divine Judgment in straight. No, Kabuki misses and now the kill goes over to, to Reza. You wanted a snowball, Kabuki, but hey, if you're gonna miss, Reza's gonna take it. Renegade forced to back away, oh, no. gives the information over to Oheb. The tier one needs to be sacrificed here. Hey man, a kill is a kill and as long as we're pushing the tempo, yeah, we are ahead. Aura Fire, they want to keep feeding that fire fuel to it. These logs, this gas, and they just keep on going. Now, Turtle has turned into Lord. This is a major objective that I think Blacklist can commit to contesting, but they have to have full vision. They, oh, no, not like this. Mm. Not with the waves being cut this deep yeah. in. Oh, shades of the general, shades of the lar. Look at how deep that Uranus is in. I hate it. I hate it so much. The double proxy already looking so very good. And now they're getting on top of Ant so far. He's tanking it, but he's only taking so far. Whoa. He ends up dying regardless. Reza tries his back. The shadow strikes are good, but Edward finally pops his vengeance at the very end. He doesn't have the electrifying beats, but the rest of Blacklist International are a man up. And here comes Paul Levy to stand in that front line, taking almost no damage against Ohem who doesn't have his items without that retribution it's tough but Bennett's Rage comes out mega kill come now from Agent Zero who hey, helps Hades secure this Lord with his own retry Blacklist finally back away they are yet to be out of the woods Aura Fire still ahead maybe seven eight hundred gold and now Edward close to it forward flicker by Kabuki all right that just that just puts us back to zero maybe mm. I don't think it, uh, well, I guess it kind of puts us back to zero, right? I mean, Close we'll, to it. Yeah, the minions are going to spawn in about four more seconds. Edward is going to be back up at 19. A little unfortunate. Slightly better for Blacklist this time around. Mm -hmm. They have their minions enhanced by the Lord, marching down through mid. And 
Yeah, Edward stayed a little too long there, maybe a second too long. And yeah, bad news is Blacklist aren't going to be able to capitalize on this Lord. Yeah. I mean, not a single turret pushed. Not a single one. And now Blacklist, they're slowly pushing back up, right? They're, look at the side lanes. They're just getting taken care of. The one and four from Orofire is good. And Puff Levy is just this huge brick wall that Blacklist International need to deal with. And they're going for it, right? They push him out of position into the rest of Orofire. The Divine Judgment pulled back into the RWM, but it really does matter as the Shadow Tepid is able to counter it. Call Altar of their own. And Vaughn too low. Double kill for Oheb. Oh. And Abadami is on the run he cannot take any further than this late entry by agent zero was key there he was the additional bit of damage that blacklist needed to force the issue to change aura fire's tempo and because of that yeah they're gonna death ball on through to convert that's bottom ta uh, bottom tier one taken top tier two taken oh going deep and now they just need to continue this Tempo. They just need to continue mm -hmm. on this path. Blacks International for the first time in the series. Ahead by about a thousand. Yeah, I mean, you got to give it to Renegade right now because he is making sure that High is having a tough time finding these Divine Judgments, right? You need to be able to kind of pull them away. That's the big key thing about, uh, about the, uh, not sorry, not, not the Kadita, but the, the Kaja. But man, that Shadow Stampede has been so sharp each and every time, pulling him back. Yep, and that's the Tempo Breaker. That's one of the few ways that Blacklist can be punished in this position that they're in now. 12 minutes in. 11 kills for Blacks International, but mind you, Aura Fire have made the most of the six that they've gotten. Really, they've put this game in a standstill, and it's Blacklist who's trying to claw through. Conceal play set in by Renege. Mm -hmm. They want Paul Levy, but they realize it's just not worth their time. They don't see anybody else other than high on the map, and they've since they backed off, it's just back to housekeeping, right? Top side, bit of a slow push. Don't know what the HP of the minions is, but it's slightly in favor of Aura Fire, so that should start collapsing sooner rather than later. Bottom side, even finally, the housekeeping is here. The Blacklist International sticking at has five, and especially since Lord is coming up in 13 seconds, Aura Fire have done their housekeeping. Yep, and because of that, we're back to deadlock. Gold at equilibrium, a uh, negligible lead here, but just the same, this is a luminous lord. So what they have to do is work on the long lane, make sure that that's pushing, make sure that's winning, and then go, there's a pull! Yep, Hades, he's chunked out so low, ends up dying to Kabuki, and now Blacklist International with no retribution. This is gonna be easy for Bad Levy, even if he has to sacrifice his life. RWM is gonna be coming out as well, return RWM from Reza just to stop Haji down, but Blacklist International try their absolute best. They still can't take this lord away from Aura Fire, who has the retribution so hard to go for the turn two things renegade was way off they were dealing with something else in mid and i'm not just sure how deep hades was or why but i think key there was the divine judgment right mm -hmm. so that was a great read by high second is the fact that aura fire understand that they needed hades they needed Hades, and that Pa Levy drew so much already from Blacklist, made it all the more a sure win. So yeah, this puts Aura Fire back up 2,000 gold, and the map is clearly blue. This is going to be difficult for Blacklist, but luckily they have a great high ground defense. Mm -hmm. Yep, Oheb is scaling up fast. His damage is starting to ramp up quicker than necessary, but let's keep in mind, right? Yep, another purchase, finishing off his fourth item and now building into the fifth. Aura Fire still with the lead so far. They will take all the outer turrets before Blacklist is able to spawn back as the second wave up is about to collapse on top side. Oh, Kabuki tastes a rogue spear, but clapping back to Oheb just the same with that Renner shot. Something to note, when you're inside Blacklist base, this is a better situation than they were in game one. Mm -hmm. the, the Cho isn't as great uh, in uh, comeback defense plays as the Faramis. So yes, this is a good spot to be in for Black and National if they're going to stay in. But for now though, oh, no. I'm not so sure. Oh, they've They've cornered off high! Yeah, high. He still has the flicker. He could try to make something happen, but the rest of his teammates are just way too far away, and there was no reason to be that far in the first place. Blacklist International get a free punish, but man, this just shows how important it is to clean up your room before you go to an event. That's right. That's what they call the mandatories, the upkeep. And here you see 
Oh, the RWM, the answer. It came out, but it's just to clear the waves, right? They refuse oh. to lose. Oh no, the wall, it actually collapses on towards Vaughn's side. Renegade could maybe make something happen. Doesn't get close enough, but it's going to be uh, it's going to be Haji who secures that kill. Haji flickering forward aggressively, and Razor now dropping the RWM to look to punish. Winter Trunger looks good, but in the back lines, we already see it. It's Edward, Agent Zero, finding one kill for himself, Whoa. and a second one on top of Levy with the help of Renegade. What an aggressive maneuver from Blacklist International. And that's what happens. Again, a lot of the fights that Aura Fire are going to lose are fights <laughs> that they walk into. And with that, Blacks International are pummeling on through, penetrating through mid. A huge win for them. Top lane goes as well. Oh, it's just a matter of time. Yep, does Kabuki have the ultimate? RWM is going to come out to make sure that Kabuki can actually do it. And they still have one. Vaughn tries, but it's too late. The Retribution does not connect. Blacklist International will be able to bring this to game three. We have already changed the narrative. Not like this, not this way. The Aura fam will not Sweet Blacklist, not in the SPS challenge season. Woo! <laughs> you gotta give it to Oheb, right? Again, his knockbacks, he is pushing people really out 